Awesome. All right, so to continue with the, the theme of gratitude that I've been really working with a lot myself these last couple of weeks, um, <clears throat> but I thought because it is St. Patrick's Day, I should read a quote by an Irish author. Um, so this is, I've read this before to you all. Um, this is a book called Constellations by David White. And he is an Irish philosopher. Um, and this book's cool because it's, um, he takes a word, the, the subtitle is the soulless nourishment and underlining meaning of everyday words. And he takes a word and just ponders it. And these are his ponderings on the word gratitude or the experience of gratitude, not just the word. Gratitude is not a passive response to something we have been given. <clears throat> Gratitude arises from paying attention, from being awake in the presence of everything that lives within us and without us. Gratitude is not necessarily something that is shown after the event. It is a deep state of attention that shows we understand and are equal to the gift nature to the gifted nature of life. Gratitude is the understanding that many millions of things come together and live together and mesh together and breathe together in order for us to take even one more breath of air. That the underlying gift of life and incarnation as a living participating human being is a privilege. That we are miraculously part of something rather than nothing. Even if that something is temporarily pain or despair, we inhabit a living world with real faces, real voices, laughter, the color blue, the green of the fields, the freshness of a cold wind, or the tawny hue of a winter landscape. To see the full miraculous essentiality of the color blue is to be grateful with no necessity for a word of thanks. To see fully the beauty of a daughter's face is to be fully grateful without having to seek a God to thank him. To sit among friends and strangers, hearing many voices, strange opinions, to intuit inner lives beneath surface lives, to inhabit many worlds at once in this world, is to be someone amongst all other someones. And therefore, to make a conversation without saying a word is to deepen our sense of presence and therefore our natural sense of thankfulness that everything happens both with us and without us, that we are participants and witnesses all at once. Thankfulness finds its full measure in generosity of presence. That part I love. Thankfulness finds its full measure in generosity of presence, both through participation and witness. We sit at the table as part of every other person's world while making our own world without will or effort. This is what is extraordinary and gifted. This is the essence of gratefulness, seeing to the heart of privilege. Thanksgiving happens when our sense of presence meets all other presences. Being unappreciative means we are simply not paying attention. All right, so close your eyes and sit up straight and tall. And whatever caught you in those words, just ponder the presence <clears throat> of gratitude within you. Instead of having a checklist list of, I am grateful for this, I am grateful for this, I am grateful for this. Can we experience the sensation, the embodiment, the presence of gratitude? We all know the feeling of slowing down and savoring something beautiful whether it's someone you love, something beautiful in nature, a task well done, whatever it is. So let's slow ourselves down. 
and just experience the gratitude of this moment. Experience your breath, the ease of your breath. Experience the groundedness, the support of the ground. Experience your mind able to be present in this moment. And if there's <clears throat> anxiety nibbling at you or stress, see what you can do to bring your attention to all that's working well in this moment, to the beauty of each breath. And in this way, our experience of gratitude becomes a healing force for us and for others. Notice some part of you that feels really open and free right now. All right, well, let's take our hands together. Feel the focus of this. Bring your mind's eye, your hands, your heart all into a centered point. And offer an intention here for yourself. What do you need? And let's release the hands and come onto your back. All right, so as you lie down, let's be grateful for our yoga practice, for this gift that we have that helps us feel good in our body, that helps us set our mind straight some days. Okay, let's reach into our limbs, stretch your arms overhead, and just enjoy that feeling of a beautiful morning stretch, waking up the body, inviting in energy, inviting in some joy. When you, when you come into a little bit of a back bend, and you can feel a little bit of a back bend here with your arms overhead, can you stimulate a little joy in your heart? And then bring your knees into your chest and let's rock. Okay, swaying from side to side. Feel the ease across your skull. Let your whole body rock a little bit so you get that sense of ease across your nervous system. All right, and then let's circle the knees. Let's enjoy the little massage across your sacrum. Go the other direction, feeling a sense of maybe a little less familiar of movement pattern. And then let's pull the knees away from the midline and bring them back toward the midline. Kind of check in with how your pelvis is feeling, how your femur bones and your hip joints are feeling. Right, right knee into your chest. Left leg comes along on the floor and let's roll those ankles around a little bit. Feel some freedom in your feet. Give a good squeeze of the knee, lengthen through your spine. And then let's change directions. Left knee comes in, right leg long on the floor. Feel some movement of your feet if you want. Enjoy the compression, enjoy the length of your spine. All right, and then stretch both limbs wide out. Spread your hands, spread your toes, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Take a deep breath in here. Now squeeze every muscle you can find while you're out here. And then exhale and release. Let your knees come in, your head come up. Hold this, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, squeeze this. Just squeeze whatever you have access to. And then release. One more time. No squeezing, no holding. Just expand on the in-breath and condense on the out-breath. 
head, put your head down, relax your feet for a moment, arms come out to the side, take your feet wide on the mat, and let's just start to rock a little bit left and right, just opening up the spine, opening up the sides of the pelvis, breathing well. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and find our way onto our side and come up onto your hands and your knees, breathing deeply. Okay, so as we come onto all fours, let's start to move through some cat cows. And you know, as you begin your practice and you start moving, can you be grateful for all the ease? I, you know, there's so many things that could possibly go wrong. And they're not going wrong right now. Something's working really well because you're on your mat. So it can't be too bad, right, in your body if you're able to get on your mat and do some yoga. So let's enjoy all of that freedom, all of that ease in the body. Moving freely through your spine, start to move any direction you want to move. So you don't have to do um, cat cows. You can move side to side. You can do some circles with your pelvis or your shoulders, or your head. Try to just let your body be free. All right, and then stretch back towards child's pose. Walk the hands out in front of you, lengthen through your spine, drop some weight into your hips, feeling your hips drop down toward your heels. Deep breath, walk the hands over to one side or the other, and feel the opening through the rib cage. Let the breath touch those ribs. See if you can get awake inside the lungs. And then come back to center. Walk your hands over to the other side. Drop some weight into the hips. Breathing well. Neck is soft. And then come back to center. We're going to put our elbows on the ground. Hopefully this is, uh, you're able to do this. If not, you can stand up and put your elbows on a table or a counter or the back of a chair. And right, we're going to drop our thumbs toward our spine and just open up the triceps a little bit. If you were in class yesterday, we did a lot of work on the back body. You might be sore in your triceps. So let's just come into that state of awakening. Now notice if your armpits want to fall to the floor, lift under the armpits a little bit and stretch your tail away from your crown. And then release your hands down to the ground again. Come up on tall fours, move your spine around. And then we're going to come into a twist. Reach the arm up in the air, exhale and slide that shoulder down to the ground. Feel the freedom across the backside of your body melt through your skull. Deep breath in and away. And square the chest toward the floor a little bit. Just drag the arm back through a little bit. So we're just stretching through the backside of your shoulder. You can drop your hips down towards child's pose. Breathing into the back of the shoulder joint. And then inhale, arm up to the sky, place that hand down onto the ground. Second side, arm up. Exhale and slide that shoulder underneath, feeling the twist, gaze toward the floor, ground into your hand on the floor. See what it feels like to have that weight, that support. Can you be grateful for this breath that's coming right now? And then slide your chest toward the floor. Drop your hips back a little bit so the arm pulls away from the twist a little bit. Stretch through the back side of your shoulder. And then inhale, arm lifting back up to the sky, hands down onto the ground. Let's find our pose. Stretch up. Now your legs get to get involved, so feel free to pedal your feet. Feel free to have any kind of movement that helps you come into your body a little bit more. Notice the sense of yielding. Can you ground your four limbs into the earth? Can you push off the earth to lift through your spine? Do you have even weight across your hands? Do you have even weight across the balls of your toes? 
Anything you want to do, if you like bending your knee one at a time, getting into the Achilles a little bit more, just notice whatever movement is going to help you be here now. The neck is soft. And then walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, fold in half. Your knees can bend as much as you want so that the bend happens from your hip joints, not from your spine. Relax your head. As we come into a halfway lift, you can hold your legs or some blocks or the floor. Thigh bones come back, straighten your legs now, stretch the backs of your knees, lift your sit bones, spread out the bones of your feet. Enjoy the length of your spine. And exhale and melt and fold. Drop your seat, lift your chest, rising on up. Okay. Bring the arms to the sky, take a breath. Open through your chest, and open the heart, and exhale, and release. Shake out your hands. Finding the breath. And one more time. Open chest, cactus, open the arms. Pull the elbows down a little bit, spread your wings, and then exhale, and round the chest a little bit. Tuck your chin towards your chest. Rise up with your arms, grab onto the right wrist with the left hand, and come over to the side just a little bit. We're not dropping down, we're lifting up. Ground through the four corners of both feet. Okay, come back, change sides. Bring, lengthen through your side body. Try not to tug on the shoulder. Let this lift through the arm come from the bottom rib cage. And let the rib also root down all the way to your foot. Okay, and come back up. One more cactus, open your chest. And then release the hands, shake them out. <clears throat> Interlace your fingers behind your back, open the chest, bend your knees, relax your head, and release your spine a bit. See if you can lengthen. Bend your knees as much as you want. The arms can come away from your spine wherever they go. All right, let's relax our hands back down to the ground. Halfway lift, spine is longer. Are you starting to feel a little more free in your body? Are you at home? Melt your head, relax again. Step your left foot back, right foot stays forward, come to a lunge. Hands can be on blocks if you like that. Open up through the chest. Let's go back and forth. Let's get into the legs here, straightening the front leg a bit, bending the front knee. Just enjoy. Moving through the body. Feeling that sense of pulsing through one movement and moving to another. Right, let's ground our legs. Feel that sense of stability. Once you're ready, rise up. Bring the arms to the sky. Maybe your arms don't come up. Maybe you'd rather your hands come into or down to your hips. So it doesn't matter. Be where you're most stable, where your breath is easy and free. Find the open heart. Yeah. All right, we're gonna come on to your right foot, come into a one-legged balance, so half splits. Just start to turn on some of those balance muscles in your leg. Square up the hips, the inner thigh of the leg in the air is lifting to the sky, press out through your foot. See if you can lengthen crown to foot. Breathing well. Take an inhale, as you exhale, tuck in, either the knee comes next to the knee like a one-legged squat or a knee tucks behind, you decide. See if you can curl into that ball and that push slowly, like you weigh 10 times as much as you weigh. Try to straighten the legs, find the breath, and then exhale and place that foot down next to your other foot, fold in half. Halfway lift, long spine, sit bones come high, Exhale and melt again. Right foot back, left foot forward, lunging. Enjoy just the opening in the body. We're going to go from a lunge to straightening the leg a bit. It doesn't have to be all the way straight. We're just letting flow happen, kind of warming the muscles, all the soft tissues in our body, getting some fluids moving in our legs. Stay inside the breath. Be present for it. Be grateful for it. 
All right, let's ground again. Settle the bones down into the earth and then rise up from that place. Once again, arms might come up. Maybe your arms have a different plan today. There's anything that supports you. So experiment, be free in your postures. Let loosen up where you can experiment for what's feeling good in your body. Forget about the prescription of my body must look like this for this pose to be accurate. Really what's accurate is listening to the body. The only principles to follow are, do I feel stable? Do I feel free? Am I able to breathe? Am I self-supporting? Can I feel the earth supporting me? Listen to these cues instead of my leg should go here and my toe should go here and my arm should go here. Breathe your way into the posture. Release the hands, half lift here. So, or not half lift, half splits. So we're stretching that leg straight back behind us. Start to turn on all those standing, one-legged standing muscles. So your glutes are working, your outer hip. Soften the knee you're standing on so you're not pushing the knee back and locking. Extend from your crown to your foot in the air. Inner thigh rolls up toward the sky a teeny bit more. Find the breath as you exhale. One-legged squat, feel the earth ground through that foot. Notice if there's wobbles in your knee or your hips, stabilize as best as you can. Use your core. And then when you're ready, push slowly, push so slowly like you weigh 10 pounds, not 10 pounds, 10 times your weight. Stretch and lengthen your body. Place that foot down next to the other foot. Relax. Stand on up again. Bringing the arms to the sky, trace down through the center, pause in Tadasana. All right, so as we come into a one balance pose, we're gonna stand on our right foot and we're gonna reach over to the side. So waking up some of the outer hip muscles, turn your toes forward, the toes in the air and stretch your limbs. Think of that star we did on the floor earlier, reach into your body, Squeeze all your muscles, engage, and then exhale and place that foot down onto the ground. Root down to rise up, second side. All right, so use your outer hips, use your core, relax your neck. Breathe and even all the way to your feet, have a sense of extension and length. How's your back? Can you support with your core? And relax and melt it down two feet onto the ground. Pause for a moment. Enjoy the yielding, enjoy the sense of ease of balance. Two feet is so much easier than one foot, so let's just enjoy. Take a deep breath in, arms coming to the sky. Big circle round, fold forward. Halfway lift, relax your neck, melt and fold. Step back to dog pose. So whatever foot you don't usually take back, try and get in the habit of switching feet when we go back. All right, feel into the ground. It's so nice to have your head so close to the earth. See if you can melt the brain. Enjoy what this pose offers to the mind as much as the body. All right, let's come forward into a plank, holding yourself steady. Integrate into the core of your body. So we're finding our side ribs, we're finding our core, we're finding our back muscles. Even your glutes are working in this posture. Let your breath travel to the outside of the rib cage, even under the armpits, breathe. All right, get your knees down onto the ground and find the earth. Roll your shoulders a few times, just get into that feeling of mobility. Inhale, cobra pose. Enjoy a little back bend. Exhale, and melt back down. Try again, rise up. Exhale, rise down. Curl your toes under, separate your legs a little bit wider, hands underneath your forehead, lift just your legs. All right, so feeling some work in those outer hips, breathing well. Let's turn our toes out while we're here, and then turn your toes down while we're here. 
And just repeat that a couple of times, turning the feet out all the way from the hips, turning the feet down. Stabilize with your core. One more time. And then relax and rest your legs. Put your knees back to midline, pick up your feet and just windshield wiper your knees left and right. Relax your back. And we're gonna roll over onto our right side. So lie down on your right. Support underneath your head if you want to with a blanket, okay? Whatever you want. And we're gonna stretch our body like a big long line, like a slack line. Reach the arm up in the air, reach the leg up in the air. Toes are pointing straight forward. Stabilize through the core of your body. Feel the length of your spine. Press your leg down into the ground as much as you're lifting the other leg up in the air. Find the breath. And then release and relax that leg. Put your hand down onto the ground for a moment. We're gonna feel into the sideways. Let's start to turn on the obliques and the transverse abdominis. Take a deep breath and let your ribs and belly fall, the side of your belly fall into the earth. And then as you exhale, lift the side waist off the floor. So, you know, you get a little pocket, a little sp spot under there. I always call this your mouse hole for, you know, a spot for a little mouse to climb through. So practice this a few times, exhaling to draw the side waist in, like pulling um, a drawstring on your pants a little tighter. Inhale, release that. Soften, let your belly relax. Exhale, engage. Okay, now we're gonna hold on to that engagement and see if you can still breathe. Keep the neck relaxed, engaging our mouse hole. Lift the arm in the air, lift the leg again. Press your leg into the earth as you lift your side waist off the earth. Relax your neck. Stay in the presence of your breathing. And then exhale and relax everything. Bring your knees to your chest, onto your back. Rock a little bit. Swaying from side to side. And then we're going to come over onto our left side. Lift the leg in the air. Lift the arm in the air. I think we lifted the arm first on the other side, but whatever feels good. So we're in a straight line. Now press your leg into the ground as much as your leg lifts in the air. Open across your chest. Finding the breath. So notice, does this side feel a little bit more stable, less stable, the same? Go ahead and relax the legs, relax the hand. You can put the hand on the floor in front of you and let's start to move um, some strength into our side waist. So as you exhale is when we're gonna lift the mouse hole. And as you inhale, you're gonna drop the side waist down to the earth. This can be um, counterintuitive. A lot of times when we wanna lift off the floor, our um, inclination is to inhale, like to lift, right? So see what you can do to reverse that, if that's your inclination, and let the exhale be where the strength happens on your core. Inhale to relax a bit, let your ribs move, let your belly move, and as you exhale, engage. Now start to notice that the transverse abdominis and the obliques really do have a relationship with the pelvis. So do you feel your inner thighs wanting to kick in? Do you feel any work in the outer hips or the backside of your pelvis or the pelvic floor? Just feel what's naturally um, being congruent with the action that you're doing. And now we're gonna try to use this mouse hole while in this posture. Toes are pointing forward, the neck is relaxed. Engage through your core, okay? So we're holding that mouse hole. Side waists are kinching in like a drawstring on pants. Open across your chest. And then relax and come on to your back. High knees to your chest. Give yourself a break for a moment. I'm just gonna do a little teeny bit more core work before we come off the floor. All right, so put your feet down onto the ground. 
We're going to put our hands behind our head like an old school sit up. Okay, so at the risk, don't do any old school sit ups. We're trying to be a little different here in our functionality. So we're going to lift our chest a little bit off the floor. The bottom tips of our shoulder blades are still touching. Let the head rest in your hands. Try not to grip the neck. Ground the four corners of your feet. And we're going to walk the left elbow toward the left hip and then come back. Walk the right elbow toward the right hip and then come back. If this gets challenging for your pelvis, you can always stick a block between your thighs. If you're feeling a little unstable in your pelvic floor or your pelvis, a block between your thighs can be a really great help to stabilize you in this pose. So grab a block if you need it. And we're just gonna go back and forth from side to side. Notice how your neck wants to do all this work. See if you can take some of that away. Let your head, your head rest on your hands. Open up your elbows, stay inside your breath. Try not to hold your breath to do this. Maybe inhale on the straighten up and then exhale as your elbow comes down. Head is relaxed. And then once you finish both sides, rest for a moment. Relax here, breathing well. If you haven't grabbed a block yet, grab a block. Take your arms down at your sides. Inhale, rise up to a bridge. Tops of your shoulders, come under a bit, feel the block. So we want to engage on our thighs without losing the support of our legs. So it's not just our inner thighs, we're using all of our muscles. Feel the four corners of your feet. So your hamstrings are working, your quads, your outer hips and your inner thighs. Let the inner thighs kind of be like a light switch for the pelvic floor and shine up through your spine. The pelvic floor lifts toward your spine. All right, melt and fold. Relax your legs, take the block out of there. Okay, so be very gentle. I'm gonna give you plan A, B, C kind of thing in this. The, the most difficult is to have your legs straight up in the air. I'm going to hit, I have to show this on um, this angle because I'll hit my furniture. So we're going to have legs up in the air. The head is still supported like we were doing before with the hands. And we're going to drop the right foot, not to the floor, but just down and bring right chest toward left knee. Come back up and switch sides. Try not to do this where you're pulling the elbow over. We're really trying to work with the chest moving and the head feeling supported. If that's too much, bend your knees and you can do the same thing with the knees bent. And we're gonna tap the right heel on the ground as the right chest lifts toward left knee and come back to center and switch. Okay. And if that's still too much, feet stay on the ground, arms open up and we're just gonna lift and twist to the side. Okay, so you decide which of those variations you're doing. Make sure the whole time you're going, you're doing two things. You're breathing and you're relaxing your skull. You can also have the variation where your knees bend and your opposite leg is stretching straight out instead of heel tapping to the floor. So, you know, choose a variation that helps you turn on the deeper abdominal muscles, your obliques, and your transverse abdominals. Complete that, grab your block one more time, stick it between your thighs, one more bridge. Lifting up, tops of the shoulders come down, ground through the four corners of your feet, open up the breath. Let the rib cage move in the breath, let the belly move in your breath. Go ahead and lower the body back down. Get rid of that block. Roll over onto your side and come up to dog pose. Now, as you find dog pose, enjoy the symmetry. Maybe take your feet wider apart to have some ease. All right. And then 
walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Relax your back, kind of check in with your back and make sure it didn't take any strain from that core work. Halfway lift. And exhale. And melt. Drop your seat, lift your chest, and come on up. We're going to turn sideways on the mat. Okay, you need a block. So I have one handy close by. Take your legs wide. Okay. And first, we're just going to get into our legs. So let's drop a little bit of weight from one side to the other. Okay. You can do anything you want with the arms. And you know, you can be a little higher if your body isn't so enjoying the deep lunging. So go wherever you want to go and move from the weight from one side to the other. Play with and dance through this with your arms. Move in any way that feels good to you. And then come into a deep squat. Elbows can be on top of knees since we're so wide. Open the chest, ground through the four corners of your feet, and then rise up to stand. If you're dizzy, just tuck your chin, squeeze to the midline. And then as you're ready, we're gonna come into Virabhadrasana two. So warrior two, turn your right toes out, rise up with your arms. Deep breath here, exhale. Bring your hands to your heart. Straighten your leg, exhale. One more, arms up, legs straight. Virabhadrasana two. Now settle here. Maybe your arms want to come somewhere else. Maybe you want to rest and have your hands in a more restful place for today. Maybe you're feeling full of energy and you just want to expand. Find the breath. Ground through four corners of each foot. See if you can stabilize. Come out of the pose a little bit. If you're feeling, you know, like your breath is getting away from you, go a little deeper if you feel like you have a little more. Okay. And then straighten the leg up and come into triangle pose. Use block if you want, put your hand on your leg if you want. Especially if your hand ended up on your leg. Be very mindful that you're not bearing a lot of weight, especially around your knee. We want to be light as a feather with our hand, either on leg or block. Ground into your legs. Let your legs be the support for the pose instead of your hand being supported by a block or leg. Open the chest. Okay. Find your breath. Come on up. Bend your knee. Arzokanasana. Now, when we come into this side stretch, you know, all those muscles that you just worked hard in the core work we did, see if you can feel that length through the side of the body. Grounding through four corners of the feet, relax your neck. Press into your feet, especially your front foot. Press into the four corners, find that heel. And then come on up to stand. Let's turn back to center. Same poses on the left side. Okay. Arms coming up. Deep breath. Exhale. Coming into Vera 2. Inhale. Hands come together. Exhale out again. One more time. We're just sneaking our way into that rotation of the hip. And I want you here, if your hands want to be down, have your hands be down. If you want to go deeper, go deeper. If you want to go more shallow, go more shallow. There's no rules. We're just finding where we're most stable. Breathing well, shoulders are soft. Feel the earth, feel the bottom of your feet. And you press the four corners of each foot. Find that work of the front hip. Relax your neck, just like you did in the, in the sit-up. See if you can melt the base of the skull. There's no tension, no need to have tension here right now. All right, straighten the leg. Find your way into triangle pose. Hand can come on 
the leg or a block. You can be high in this pose where your hand is high on your thigh. You can be low where your hand is on your foot or anywhere in between. All right, so open up the chest, round into the feet. Enjoy the stretch through your hamstring, but be mindful that you're not leaning into the stretch of your front leg hamstring. So ground the four corners of your foot, be a little active, root the heel, shoulders away from the ears. Try not to lock out the front knee, a little micro bend in that knee. All right, come back up, bend your knee again. Okay, so find Parsva Konasana, elbow can come on the knee or hand can come on a block. When our arm comes overhead, see if you can feel that full stretch through the length of the side body that you were just working, round into the feet. So feel the earth, relax the neck, the base of the skull does not have to work hard. Ungrip your toes, spread the feet out, especially from that Press the front heel, feel the work of the hip. And then rise all the way back up. Turn your feet to the long edge of your mat and come resting down in the midline. Maybe your head comes on a block. Maybe your head dangles. Whatever is a choice that you like. Thigh bones move back, feet are facing forward. Heel, toe your feet in until we get back to the midline. Pause here for a moment, feet hip width apart. Enjoy the breath. All right, a little simple balance. We're going to take our weight into our right foot and just bring your left knee up. So, once again, just practicing the art of waking up some of those muscles that help us balance on one foot feel your ankle the lower leg the hip okay, and then switch sides take your left foot down lift your right knee up so this is a you know fairly easy pose compared to some other balance poses we're not adding a lot of other things in so we can really focus on that sense of yielding grounding and rising where we get to notice if we lock out the line. Okay, so if you push out to the side and lean into the joints, either forward, out, wherever you go, we lose the length all the way to our crown. So unlock those joints. And then rest that foot down onto the ground. Okay, so get rid of that pose. You can shake it out. Stand in Tadasana. Let's just enjoy. Deep breath in. We'll exhale away. Enjoy your groundedness. Let's have gratitude for the earth below us. If we're experiencing just the sensation of gratitude that we don't have to checklist or be even give words to, can you experience something right in this moment that is beautiful? Can you let your heart express gratitude in the presence of this moment? All right. Let's grab our block. We're going to come into Ardha Chandrasana, Half Moon Pose. So you turn your right toes out. You can, I'm, I'm uh, restricted in space in my yoga space. Um, at least if I want to turn this way, I could turn the other way, but then you can't see me. So find space so that you can start this pose. I'm in a very narrow triangle pose, so it's not super great, but if you can be in triangle pose comfortably and have room to step, that would be fabulous. All right, so open the chest. We're gonna look at our front foot and make sure it doesn't move. So we wanna keep that foot as grounded as possible and bend into that leg, 
and rise up. Hand comes onto the block. You can have the block on the pinky toe side. That's a little hack for balance because you don't have to have the block directly in line with the foot. It can be off to the left a little bit or to the right rather a little bit. Open the chest. Now lift that leg. Remember all that core work we did earlier. Find it again. Find all those stabilizing muscles in your legs and hips. Breathe well. Even your pelvic floor can it shine a light up to your crown. Breathing deeply. Neck does not have to do a lot of work here. We're going to come out the way we came in, back to triangle pose, and up you go. Now, if you know that you need some support for balance, there's a couple of ways you can put your whole back against a wall. You can do this pose, you know, so for instance, I could have my back leaning against this wall to do this posture. Um, so we're going to come into the other side. You can also have your foot resting on something or your hand. You know, you can be on, instead of a hand on a block, you can be hand on something a little more firm, like a chair or a table. So let's come to the other side. I'm going to do it against the wall on this side. So we're going to start our posture in triangle pose. Okay, so opening up the chest, finding your breath. And then we're going to make sure our left foot is planted and we're going to rise up, not letting that left foot move. We're going to open our bodies up to, to crescent moon, shoulders away from the ears, crown to tail, the heel in the air. We're using those side bodies. We're using our core. We're using our legs. Unlock your knee. Try to have the grounding happen through your foot, root to rise up through that hip. Feel the rotation in your standing leg. Use your glutes. Shoulders are soft. Your neck does not have to work. You can turn your head to look up at the sky. You can also look down. You can look straight ahead. Take a giant step back. The way you came in is the way you go out. And then come on up. Everybody, once you're ready, come back to dog pose. You can always do a half dog against a wall or a piece of furniture, if you'd prefer that over dog pose. Remember, especially when you're at home, uh, there's so many ways to modify your practice for just what you need today, depending on how your energy level is, how your joints are feeling, if you have any injuries that you're nursing, if you're protecting certain parts of your body, just find your way. All right, let's come forward into a plank. Use your core, stabilize here. Breathing in and out. Inner thighs lifting to the sky. Find that sense of symmetry. As you're ready, you can find the floor. Roll the shoulders a few times. And then decide whether you want arms and legs to do this position, this pose, or just legs. So arms can you either come down at your sides, out to the sides, or up overhead. Your legs can be wide or close. And we're going to lift everything up. Now, if you don't want to lift everything up, you can keep your head down on your hand. Find your breath. Toes pointing toward the floor or turned a little out. Your choice. Breathe. Let your whole body move as you breathe. Relax. Up on tall fours. Move the spine about. Breathing well. And come back to child's pose. Relax your hips. Relax your spine. Breathing deeply. And then come on to our back. This time our block is going to go under our pelvis for a supported bridge pose. And this can be low, middle, or high, your choice. Okay. We're opening up the chest, put your arms wherever you want. If you want to go super high, try not to ever be on a block like this. 
with your sacrum on the skinny side. If you want to go high, stack two blocks, one on top of the other across your sacrum. So you want to have the feeling that whatever height the block or blocks are, that they are supporting your pelvis, not just your sacrum. But you feel the block on the pelvic bones too. Big breaths into the rib cage, into the belly. Feel the balance across your sacrum. Relax your neck. All right, now you might need to adjust the block a little bit. We're gonna draw the knees to the chest, just a little bit of traction. And then legs straight up. Now, of course, anytime we lift our legs over our pelvis, over our heart, we get all the benefits of inverting. But the other joy of doing this on a block is the support of gravity kind of weighting that our legs, all the bones in our legs, all the weight of our legs is dropping into the pelvis. So our pelvis gets to have that, it's almost like a weighted blanket feeling where the pelvis gets to reset into balance and neutrality. Okay, so bend the knees, put the feet on the floor, hips get up so the block can come out. And we're going to either do pigeon pose or reverse pigeon pose. So you could put your right foot on your left knee and stretch your hip this way. And now I'm doing it with my left foot on the furniture so that my upper body can be totally relaxed. And that's what I'm in the mood for today. But maybe you're in the mood to hold your leg and go a little deeper. Maybe you're in the mood for pigeon pose. So whatever is good for you for right now. Breathing deeply. No matter which pose you're choosing, make sure you feel into the balance of the two sides of your pelvis. You don't want one hip hiking up toward the shoulder more than the other. The sit bones widen. Whether the back of your head or the forehead is resting, let your head rest either on the floor or if you're in pigeon pose, maybe your forehead on a block or on your hands your elbows on the floor, whatever position helps you to feel the weight of your head having support. Big breaths. Change sides when you're ready. If you are on your back, you can just switch and put your left foot on your right knee. If you're in pigeon pose, change sides. Maybe you like to come to dog pose in between and lift that leg up. Maybe you just like to switch sides. All is well with no matter what you'd like to do. Widen your sit bones. Once you get to your pose, widen your sit bones, balance the pelvis, keep the spine elongated, melt the head. There's no rush to come out of the pose. When you feel balanced, when you feel ready, prepare for Shavasana. Now that might be in the twist for you. 
It might mean a happy baby pose. It might mean both. There's plenty of time. There's no rush. So do any postures that help you feel like you're ready to release the body, that you feel complete in your practice. If there's something we haven't touched on that you know you need in your body, go ahead, go for whatever it is. As you prepare for Shavasana, remember that this is, this is the gift of presence, Shavasana is. So as you get comfortable, make sure you're just, just so comfortable. Okay, so any support, if you need warmth over you, if you like something over your eyes, if you like support underneath your knees, if you like to have your legs up on a couch, if you like to be on your side, doesn't matter, just find a position that's really comfortable and freeing for you. Some people even like to do Shavasana on their belly because it's that sense of security and um, protection of facing the earth. All right, so as you find your way, let your body rest. Feel your limbs and feel into the symmetry of your body. Of course, we're not totally symmetrical, but feel what you can. Melt everything down. Your eyes, all the muscles that control expression on your face just become the blank slate. As best as you can. As you feel yourself surrender, breathe deeply, come into the experience of your breathing. Have some gratitude for whatever it is that's arising in the sensations that you feel.
begin to deepen our breathing again. Feel your body melt into the floor. Let's find our way into movement. And so that could be movement of little things like your fingers, excuse me, and toes, or it could be big arm overhead, big movements in the body. So choose your path. Actually, you find your way onto your side. You lift yourself up to sit. Let's bring our hands together at our heart. A deep sense of gratitude for all that is. For your gratitude outward share, send your love to someone you are very grateful for. Namaste. Thank you everyone. Blessings on the day.